V-Track E5000 series. Initial setup. Now that we've cabled everything up, we'll connect a notebook to the management switch and access the VTRAC E5000 web-based management interface. First, connect the workstation to the Ethernet management switch. Next, establish a connection to the E5000 GUI. Start by making sure you're within network range. The E5000 has a default IP of 10.0.0.1 with a Class C subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. We'll use 10.0.0.10 with a Class C subnet of 255.255.255.0, which will allow us to access the E5000's web-based management interface. Now let's ping the E5000 to test a connection. Looks good. Next, open a web browser and go to 10.0.0.1. Log in with the username administrator and the password password, all lowercase. Note that Mac OS X users can leverage Bonjour to discover the unit by simply opening a web browser and using Bonjour to discover it. Let's have a quick look at product registration. Upon initial login, you will be prompted to register your product. We recommend that you do this now. It's fast, it ensures that your product is under warranty, and makes it easier for you to get support in case you ever need it. In order for the VTRAC to communicate with our registration server, configure the maintenance mode IP addresses for both controllers and the virtual management port. Don't forget to update your computer network settings appropriately so you can access the newly defined IP addresses. Once you've configured your management ports, sign in and follow the steps to register your product. Note that if you don't have a Promise ID, you will need to create one first. Now let's use the dashboard to configure the storage. Please note that Automatic and Express will be removed in the next release and replaced with Optimal Configurations, an ideal option for media and entertainment applications that use XSEN or Storenext at mouse click. We'll choose the Advanced Configuration because in the next video, we'll present the LUNs to the ESX6 server to demo mount and access. First, choose an alias. We're using SSD drives, so we'll set media type to SSD. Notice that the graphic updates to indicate that the SSD head is now available for configuration, while the HDD JBOT is not. Let's create an 11 drive RAID 5 configuration. We'll create the spare in a bit. We'll disable media patrol because it's not necessary for solid state drives. Now for the logical drive. Choose another alias and select RAID 5. We'll use the whole capacity, which happens to be 16 terabytes. We'll use a stripe of 64, a 512 sector, and read ahead and write back policy. Perfect rebuild works hand in hand with our predictive data migration feature, so enable it. Set the preferred controller ID to auto and add the logical drive. Now let's set up our spare. We'll make it dedicated and revertible. And let's choose this one. 
review the summary, and submit it. Repeat these steps for the second array. Now for the JBOD. Note that the media type auto selects HDDs because you've already set up the head. Choose an alias. Let's use 12 drives with no spare since we'll be using RAID 6. Select RAID 6 and keep the default settings along with enable perfect rebuild since we've enabled predictive data migration. Set up the remaining drives the same way. The SAN storage is now ready for use. For more advanced configurations, please refer to our Quick Start Guide and Product Manual, available at our Download Center at promise.com support. And for additional tips, please visit our knowledge base at kb.promise.com. In the next video, We'll show you how to mount and access the E5000 in a virtual environment using VMware ESX6. Promise, the leader in storage solutions.